As I grow older, I can't help but think about the impact I'm having on this world and what I'll be leaving behind for my kids and someday their kids. It makes me wonder, what will my legacy be? As I finish college, I'm really just beginning to shape the impact that I'll have on the world. The conversations I have and the actions I take all will determine what my legacy will be. For most of my life, no one around me talked about the environment. In school, we didn't learn about the climate or ways to be green. On the other hand, I was taught about the environment in school. For as long as I can remember, I've known we're in an environmental crisis because of human actions and that there were things that I could be doing to help. And that's why, ever since she was in elementary school, she has driven her mom and I crazy with her determination to save the world, one toilet paper tube at a time. <laughs> I still remember the day in fourth grade when we were taught about how to minimize trash pollution. That day, I rushed home all excited to get my mom and dad to try this amazing thing called recycling. Yeah, I hated it. It was inconvenient. It took more work than just throwing everything in the garbage. And I didn't really want to change. But I persisted. And I resisted. And so I persisted some more. So, of course, we did. We started separating out a few things here and there. And before we knew it, we were recycling so much that we had to get a recycling bin that was twice as big as our garbage can. And over time, I was kind of proud of how much waste we had saved from going to the landfill. According to a University of Utah study, the average American adult will create 90,000 pounds of waste by the end of their life. And of this garbage, half of it could have been recycled. This means that through recycling alone, we're on track to change our family's legacy by over 75,000 pounds. That's like saving the weight of three school buses worth of garbage from going to the landfill. Of course, recycling was just the start, right? By the time she was in high school, she was pushing us to try even more. Since we were doing well with recyclables, she started pointing out all the other garbage we were still throwing away. I'm pretty sure we had enough plastic bags spilling out of our kitchen cupboards to open up our own grocery store. It was a lot. Actually, this is something you can try yourself, too. Take a moment and think about every piece of garbage you've ever thrown away. Whether it was yesterday, a few days ago, or what would you say now? 50 years? Hey, hey, careful. Every coffee cup, plastic water bottle, takeout box, food wrapper, and smelly diaper. Imagine all of it piled high right next to you. How much garbage do you think there would be? When I think of my garbage pile, I'm sure it's full of candy wrappers, popcorn bags, and all your stray Legos I stepped on in the middle of the night. <laughs> It might be hard to imagine just how much there actually is, because when we throw things away, we instantly forget about it. But most of it is still here, right? Filling our landfills, littering the ground, floating in our oceans. And unfortunately, it'll still be here long after we're gone. When I visualized everything like that, I realized that as of right now, that waste is my legacy. Actually, it's our legacy. Unless we do something different, this is what we're passing down from generation... To generation. But I came to see that I could do something different. I just had to decide to do it. That's the great thing about this. We each have the power to change how we contribute to our waste legacy. Poet Amanda Gorman recently reminded us of this when she said, our inaction and inertia will be the inheritance of the next generation. Our blunders become their burdens. In other words, what we do now will determine whether our legacy is one of apathy or action. 
our family started with one conversation in the fourth grade and one small change. As we saw the results of our simple efforts, we started opening up to try even more. More conversations, more resistance, and more small actions have now led to significant change. Over time, we're rewriting the story of what our family will leave behind on this planet. When we really got serious about making a difference, Cassidy told us about a three-step method that made it easier for our family. And maybe it'll help yours, too. The three steps are assess, act, and amplify. We started with assess. Cassidy encouraged us to make a list of what we were already doing to reduce waste. And then, as a family, we brainstormed ideas on what more we could do. One example was when we started looking carefully at the waste we couldn't recycle, we realized food wrappers created the most waste for our home. That's how we got ideas like bringing reusable bags to the grocery store, avoiding foods wrapped in plastic as much as possible, and always using our own water bottles or coffee mugs. Every time we reassess, we think of simple ways to do even more. And then step two is to act. Since we can't change the world with intention alone, we use the assessments to decide on the next action, and then we get to it. The actions we take depend on what we're already doing. Our family started with recycling, and so we just kept growing from there. Now we bring our own storage containers for leftovers when we eat out, we try to purchase from stores that offer low-waste shipping packaging, and we even started using a little compost bin so that our food waste doesn't go to the landfill. All of these small actions can make a big impact. And then finally, step three is to amplify. We share what we're doing with others. We tell extended family members, friends, coworkers about the steps we're taking. We don't preach or push. We just share our excitement in the hopes that they may want to try some of this for themselves. I amplify through social media by sharing what I'm doing, and I really like to see what other people are doing, too. Recently, I even reached out to the mayor of my city and set up a meeting to discuss expanding the community recycling and composting programs. Did I mention she was persistent? By amplifying, we keep the conversations and the ideas flowing. This method is the driver behind the environmental grassroots movement, and all of us can be a part of it. When we assess, act, and amplify, we can change our legacy and the planet. And by the way, well, I'm committed to this process now, it took me a lot to get here. With each new idea she came up with, my first instinct was resistance. <laughs> So I was patient and I kept trying. I kept reminding my mom and dad about why this is so important and how much good we can do. The more I was willing to listen, the more I came to see that every single one of us can be a driver of change. Starting from our own homes, we can create behavioral changes in the stores we shop at, the businesses we buy from, and even the politicians we elect. It's up to me and my generation to care about our legacy and to become a part of the solution. And it's up to me and my generation to turn these environmental solutions into everyday life so that the following generations don't need to fight like we do today to save our planet. One way or the other, we're passing something down to the next generations. Will we leave them with the problems we chose not to prevent? Or will we equip them with solutions to shape a brighter future? Knowing that I'm now making a difference, I think, this is my legacy. What will your legacy be?